With VCT champions winding down, we have seen some insane team comps for every single map. Not to mention with the newest map, Pearl, pro teams have been innovating and adapting their agent picks from game to game. What's going on, Pro Guides family? It's your host, Sergeant Frost. And today, we are bringing you the updated best agent comps for every map based on what the top teams around the world are running. When it comes to what agents are good on every map, it can be extremely hard to find that perfect balance of aggression and defensiveness. Also, as a quick reminder, come visit us at ProGuides.com if you want an immortal or radiant coach to help you improve your game just in time for the final push for the end of the act. Now, before we jump into the video, let's first get to our question of the day. Today's question is, what is your favorite map to play in Valorant at the moment? For me personally, I really still enjoy Ascent. It's a classic map and it never lets me down. Let us know in the comments down below what your favorite map is. Now, let's hop into the first map. Ascent is one of Valorant's original maps and has seen a total of 32 games played in the most recent Champions Tournament. There has been an extremely obvious best team comp for Ascent played by Optic, DRX, and FPX, and a few other teams that saw great success. This team consists of KO, Omen, Killjoy, Jet, and with many teams picking a second initiator of Sova or Fade. Double initiators have seen an extreme rise in popularity since their utility that is focused on gathering information is so viable to top tier teams on both defense and offense. Fade and Silva both do an amazing job at gaining map control. But Fade has seemingly taken priority since her ultimate and two prowlers are unmatched at cleaning angles and taking sight control. KO has taken the role as main initiator with a 96% pick rate on Ascent and it's easy to see why. With meta picks being KJ, his utility is perfect for disabling her utility to make the sight takes a breeze. His knight provides fantastic information on both sides of the map, while his flashes are perfect for pressuring both A and B main as well as mid. Omen has been the ultimate controller for Ascent since his smokes recharge. He is able to help his team take all important mid control, fight for the ultimate orbs on both sides of the map, and when his team is ready to take a bomb site, he will have his smokes up for the site take. Other controllers in the game just aren't able to be as versatile as Omen, and picking them leaves your team unable to contest all points of the map. His flash is perfect for catching enemies off guard and is unavoidable for the enemy. So whether it be retake, site take, or stalling the enemy, Omen's flash is simply a cut above. His teleports are also nice for taking advantage of verticality Ascent has on the bomb sites and mid. Killjoy fell out of the meta on Ascent for a short amount of time while Chamber was at his peak, but after the nerfs, teams are once again remembering why she was so powerful. KJ's ability to stall and displace enemies is fantastic for Ascent's tight corridors that lead to both bomb sites, while also being able to keep an eye on mid. Killjoy's ultimate is also unmatched for clearing out both A and B bomb sites on defense and offense. While Chamber can still be picked on Ascent, Killjoy was overall picked most of the time, being in almost half of all Ascent games. Rounding out our Ascent draft is of course the Queen Duelist Jet. Jet is fantastic for Ascent since she can not only take advantage of the verticality, but is one of the few agents that can contest mid relatively safely. Mid on Ascent is extremely important for both sides to keep an eye on and contest. Especially if your team isn't choosing Chamber, Jet is perfect for awping those long angles and keeping control of the most neutral part of the map. Finally, Jet creates space virtually free with her smoke dash combo, enabling her team to break out of the compact A and B main entrances. Breeze is Valorant's paradise and has seen a few changes to the map since it was first introduced to competition. However, the meta team comp for this map is seemingly set in stone, with some agents seeing 100% pick rate on the map played during the previous VCT. So it's safe to say the best team comp currently on Breeze consists of Viper, Chamber, Sova, Jet, and KO. Starting things off, Viper is seeing an astounding 100% pick rate on all Breeze games played. It's pretty easy to see why teams think she's a must-have on this huge map. Viper's wall on both attacker and defender side is a map control masterpiece, giving your team access to the entire bomb site safely or is able to make the enemies think twice before pushing a position. Her poison orb and molly combo feels like an infinite stall for enemies trying to progress through A or B main. Playing post plant or holding down a bomb site is effortless with her ultimate making her a huge power pick on Breeze. The second agent on Breeze seeing 100% pick rate would be Sova. It's easy to see why the eye in the sky is finding unparalleled value in the information gathering department on a map like Breeze. Sova's drone is just too powerful for scanning the wide open areas of Breeze that the other initiators can't hold a candle to. While his shocks and ultimate are perfect tools for clearing corners or taking out enemies who are far away from your team, not to mention that his recon dart is also perfect for detecting enemies in the wide open landscape where there aren't too many angles to hide. KO comes in as our third pick in the comp and our second initiator on Breeze. Now, Breeze is an extremely big map, so more information will always be a good thing. However, KO is picked not only for the information his knife brings, but how hard he counters agents like Viper, Chamber, and Sova. It can be a nightmare for Viper to play against a KO since he invalidates every reason Viper is picked in the first place. Sova and Chamber also need to be careful in the robot's presence since he can disable both of their ultimates, and take 400 credits from Sova if he drones incorrectly or leaves Chamber stranded on a tropical island. 
KO's Molly and Flashes are also incredible, since the few viable corners enemies can play in can be mollied off, and his Flashes are unmatched for blinding enemies in such a wide open area. Rounding out our perfect Breeze draft is of course the space making duelist Jet. With Breeze being such an extensive map, Awping is a powerful tool Jet can take advantage of, while also being able to safely contest neutral zones like mid A and B main, which places Jet as an undeniable number one duelist on the map. Icebox is one of the more love-hated maps of Valorant, so let's see who the pros are playing to turn Icebox into free RR. The agents we have chilling out on Icebox are Chamber, Viper, KO, Sova, and Sage. Once again, starting out the draft with a 100% pick rate out of all 20 games played at BCT is Viper. Like Breeze, Icebox has some great distances that need to be covered for your team to see success. Whether it's on A-site, defense holding down 410, or an all-out deathmatch on B, Viper's wall helps you keep your team safe and your angles covered. Viper also gives the best mid pressure of any agent since she can smoke off mid for a sustained amount of time with only a single ability. Her ultimate chokes out enemies approaching her bomb site while her mollies makes planting any Sage's worst nightmare. Speaking of the Ice Queen herself, Sage has found her way as a meta pick on Icebox with an incredible 90% pick rate. Sage excels at one thing in particular, planting the bomb for Viper. Many teams were making the mistake of having Viper plant the bomb which can be catastrophic if she were to go down early. When this happens, the pressure on your team's mid or the wall keeping the enemy at bay are nullified. So Sage paired with her wall is a perfect answer to this problem. There are many positions that the defenders can safely harass the bomb planters from, so Sage's wall keeps her team safe while the bomb goes down. Sage's revive is also a really nice tool for leveling the playing field, while her slows are nice to combo utility with your team or just stop an all-out A rush we are used to falling victim to. The two initiator trend continues on to Icebox, with KO and Sova being all-star picks for the best Icebox comp. There is not only a lot of ground to cover on a map like Icebox, but many angles to clear. This is why the double initiator trend has seen so much success. Clearing A and B or mid can feel impossible if you're lacking the information to do so. In that case, Sova's drone and dart paired with KO's knife makes it so that your team has more than enough information to take winning fights. The duo's Molly, shock dart, and ultimate combos are fantastic for stopping or stalling bomb plants, which is infamously hard to accomplish without your planter being picked off. Finishing off our Icebox Dream Comp, we have Mr. Dreamy himself, Chamber. Chamber takes amazing advantage of the Icebox layout with his teleport since he can pressure any neutral zone of the map while being completely safe. Pair this fact with his ability to wield the operator, you have yourself a godly pick on a map like Icebox. His trip is perfectly suited to hold an area like Kitchen or Flank since there is no range limiting it, and it's in general hard to avoid for most agents. Icebox is a mixture of elevated positions and off angles which Chamber loves to abuse to keep enemies on their toes clearing every possible angle. Bind is the next map on our list, and being one of the older Valorant maps, the meta hasn't changed too much over the map's time. The comp that is seeing the most play consists of Rays, Viper, Fade, Sky, and Brimstone. Since Bind is one of the only maps in the game that doesn't have a true mid, the comps consist of a lot of stall and a lot of lockdown damage utility that combo really well. Fade sees into Rays' nade and Viper Molly into the Rays' nade, etc. This proves extremely effective at harassing players through the teleporters and stalling out the lanes of attack onto the sites. Raze is going to kick off our draft as the primary and solo duelist on Bind. She is fantastic for taking space and flushing enemies out of hard to clear positions with her nade and rocket combo. Raze also is fantastic at surprising the enemy team through the teleporters after nading or boom botting through. The entrances to both bomb sites are extremely narrow no matter which way you approach it. For Raze, this is fantastic since her utility will on one hand hold the enemy team back from taking sight while allowing herself to explode on a site while making space. The double initiator combo that has the task of getting Rays on site has been mainly Fade and Sky. Bind has multiple extremely hard 50-50 angles that you need to peek into in order to get into a site. So the combination of Sky's flashes and Fade's prowlers has proven to be the most consistent agent duo to contest this space. Sky's information gathering ability with her flash sound cue has proven invaluable for flashing through TPs and down B long, while Fade's eye and ultimate help her take so much space from the enemy that there's simply nowhere to hide. Viper and Brimstone are extremely drawing picks at first glance since you may wonder, why would you pick two controllers on a map as small as Bind? Well, the answer to that question is that Viper acts as a sort of sentinel controller hybrid on Bind. Viper is used to take slow calculated control on attack, while on defense she functions as an anchor denying one of the main entrances to either bombsite with her wall and ultimate combo. You will see many teams ulting out of B long, showers, or even A main at the start of a round to make taking the bombsite 50% harder. Viper, however, lacks the precision of the other controllers, which is why Brimstone has worked his way into the meta with an 84% pick rate on all buying games. Brim's utility is perfect for dissecting the bomb site's deep angles, CT, Heaven, and Elbow, not to mention his ultimate that can clear the entire B bomb site or hard take positions like U-Haul or Elbow. These two controllers are the perfect combo for taking any map control. 
Earl being the newest map in Valorant was not exactly a comfort pick for many of the pro teams, so the comps have drastically differed from game to game. With only 18 games on the map being played in total, there are some agents that seem to rise above the rest as staples of Pearl. The comp that saw the most play was Chamber, Fade, Astra, KO, and Neon. Agents like Sage and Viper also saw some play, but they are mostly picked as counters to agents like Neon to deny that space. Chamber was determined to be the best agent for holding down the long B-side angles. This is because he could safely play the pillar position or cubby and instantly TP back to site where the enemy again would need to walk into his crosshair. Dealing with this chamber on B turned into the default for most pro teams when attempting to take any control over at B. His trip and AWP combos are also flawless in keeping mid control, and forcing the enemy team to tread lightly when approaching off angles. Fade saw a ton of play on Pearl. She is excellent at scanning the B site with her eyes since it's a pretty barren bomb site while also providing the team utility for clearing the tight angles of A and mid. Her ultimate completely envelops both sites in a shroud of darkness that really saw no counterplay. She was also paired with KO, the second initiator pick, since he can set up his team with flashes and it makes taking mid control so much simpler. You need to clear art, KO knife does that instantly. Need to fight mid door, his knife does it as well. KO's flashes can set up your team not only in mid, but in A and B main. It's safe to say the double initiator is here to stay. Astra was the main controller picked on Pearl with an 83% pick rate out of all Pearl games. The reason for this is because of her ability to systematically take map control where the team deemed it necessary. There are many hard to clear angles like the back of pillar on B or back dug out on A where her stun and suck combo are perfect for displacing the enemy. Another factor for her high pick rate is her ability to stall and enable plants with her utility. Pearl saw a ton of bomb stalls on B and A as the main strategy for securing the round. The bomb sites don't have a ton of cover on them, so attackers are most of the time forced to play offsite and try spamming the bomb. Astra's suck and stun not only stalls this plant, but her wall directly counters the opposing team from trying to spam these strategies themselves. So if one team had Astra while the other was lacking, this pick could decide multiple rounds. Lastly, we have Neon taking the last spot as the most picked duelist on Pearl by a landslide. Many teams love taking advantage of Neon's mobility comboed with Fade and Astra's utility. Neon creates a ton of space for herself with her wall on B-Site, for example, and is able to clear out Elbow almost by herself. The Neon pick, however, saw some friction by teams picking Sage and Viper to attempt to slow her down. The meta was evolving before our eyes this champion, so the last agent spot could belong to any of these agents, only time will tell. Haven was one of the weirder maps because there seemed to be two different strategies for playing. Either a more consistent team comp consisting of Chamber, Fade, Omen with Breach being picked if it was paired with a Raze, or Neon, Jet, and Phoenix. Some teams opted to pick KJ or Astra for more bombsite stall, but for now we're going to focus on the team comp that was most picked, which is Chamber, Fade, Omen, Breach, and Jet. Breach is most commonly picked on Haven because of how many long alleyways his stun can get max value in. A main, B main mid, garage, you name it, Breach always finds value on this map. Because of this, you will see Breach paired with either Neon, Raze, or Jet. Ray's being the most picked in the tournament, but Jet was seeing the most consistent win rate. The reason for this is since Jet has smokes, she is way harder to punish for aggressively trying to take advantage of Breach's stuns while Ray's would feel left out to dry if the play does not go perfectly. Not to mention, Breach and Jet's ability to take space is unmatched with the flash stun combo. Chamber has been a staple on Haven ever since his release because of the third bomb site. The defense is already stretched super thin, so the ability to have an agent playing almost two positions at once while having a trip to hold garage or mid is invaluable. Take all that into account and you have yourself one of the best agents for this map. Haven also has many different off angles and aggressive positions for Chamber to off from and take advantage of. Omen is by far the best controller for Haven since the map is so big. Pulling off fake sight takes is extremely viable with Omen, and his recharging smokes is a must have to exploit the defense as much as possible. Omen's ultimate and flash find so much value since the bomb sites are relatively open, so flashing for your teammates or ulting for instant rotations can seem almost broken if played correctly. Fade is our final pick for Haven and again our second initiator. All of Fade's utility is extremely useful for taking space. Her ultimate covers all three bomb sites almost completely and her eye, if placed correctly, can scan every nook of any site. However, the part of Fade that separates her from agents like Sova are her prowlers. You deal with a ton of hard to clear angles on Haven on both attacking and defending sides, so having two dogs to clear for your team is invaluable. Welp, all roads seemingly lead back to Fracture. Still one of the most polarizing maps in Valorant has finally started to see a defined meta for what godly teams consist of. A Riot Dev stated that the idea of Fracture is for the defenders to attempt to take space away from the attackers instead of weathering the storm on sight. So these agents have risen to the top of the meta on Fracture. Neon, Brimstone, Breach, Chamber, with Fade and KO being interchanged depending on the team. Overall, Fade has been seeing more success in general, so she will be our second initiator for Fracture. Chamber was the only agent to see a 100% pick rate on Fracture for all of the games and it's easy to see why. 
If weathering the storm is what Riot wants you to do, then what if you just avoid the storm altogether after looking for a pick? That's Chamber for you. He's able to play on site looking for a pick or two before falling back to safety instantly. While on attack, his trips take care of the flank substantially. Breach and Neon go hand in hand for taking space away from the enemy team. By the time the enemy knows where the Breach stun is coming from, they're already getting layered on by a Neon stun into a slide for an easy kill. Many teams will use this combo to take space on all four corners of the map. Brimstone has taken the role of main controller since he is able to quickly smoke off the choke points as Neon and Breach are contesting, and he's able to use his ultimate to clear the entire A bomb site or all of tower on B. And his stim beacon is perfect for enhancing his entire team's speed while turning Neon into a true demon. Fade will be routing out our draft since she provides the information while Breach provides the displacement. Together, they form a deadly duo with Fade using her eye to scan deep behind enemy lines, while her prowlers take the dangerous close angles head on for her team. Her ultimate is amazing for taking either bombsite since it is all encompassing and combos really well with everything Neon is trying to do. It will mask her footsteps and soften enemies up for her ultimate, cutting the time to kill in half. Well guys, that's been our update in meta comps for every map and why these agents have risen to the top in their respective class. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below. This has been your host Sergeant Frost and I'll see you all again in the next one.